coming. Um, I thought I would start because I've never actually had a forum like this to, to talk and I've been feeling really um, connected to the teaching and to all of you guys here at Wanderlust. So I thought I would start just to say that my very first class with John Friend was in 2000, in the summer of 2000. It was on Guru Mai's birthday at the City Yoga Ashram. And he had, you know, 200 mats laid out in the Hatha Yoga department and everybody had a tag on their mat and I'm watching him teach and I'm not, as I've said in a couple of my classes, I'm not really believing that he is exactly how he is. I can't believe that somebody could be this happy. I can't believe that somebody could know everybody's name in the room. And then he calls my name and said something so encouraging. I don't remember exactly what it was, but something so encouraging that I immediately started to cry. It was nothing. I was in a lunge, something very basic. I immediately started to cry, having heard my own name was something so encouraging. And from that point on, I was, uh, I was in. It just wasn't so deep yet. And it took me a long time to go deep into Anasara. Um, and that's relevant only because the, the quality of softness that I realized that was necessary for me to take on what he had to offer was not known to that point by me. And what I hope to share with you guys is that the title of this talk is The Freedom of Discipleship. That has everything to do with a lot of softening. As, at least as far as I'm concerned. And that may be, may or may not be of use to you who are here and anyone who's watching this outside of, of this um, forum today, later in the future. I realized that in order to really embrace somebody else's welcoming of me, I had to welcome myself in a completely radically different new way that I had not known before. And this is something that all of us need to hear again and again and again. And I have, luckily I have friends around me who are constantly reminding me that I am welcomed, that I am worthy, that I am loved, that I am a good teacher. These are all things that I forget every single day of the week, every day, every minute of every day. And so for each of us to practice, this is what we did this morning in the meditation, for each of us to practice welcoming ourselves again and again and again, softening ourselves so that we can take in when somebody is encouraging us, so that we can take in when somebody is actually doing the opposite, not encouraging us at all, we can actually take it in and welcome ourselves to that moment and heal that moment in some way because we have welcomed ourselves. Okay? This is what, for me, this is the freedom of being somebody's student. This is what John taught me. This is what John taught me from the second he welcomed me in the first class that I took with him and I still was such a freaking skeptic of what he was and how he was. He welcomed me in a way that still informs what I'm doing today. That said, um, there are a couple of other things that I wanna talk about that I think are relevant and then we'll open up the floor if anybody has any questions for me about anything that I've done or anything that um, I've studied. The, the level of uh, care that I've taken with my Anasara training and my discipleship has grown over the past 10 years pretty radically also. Um, there was a period of time about two years in when I was taking for granted that, you know, I was a, an Anasara teacher and I opened up a studio and I had yet to be certified and it was such a ridiculous thing because who opens up a studio when they're not even certified in the method? Yet there I was, and on one day in May 2002, I just found the um, emails, both John and Douglas Brooks, Rajanika Yoga, who was the first guy who opened me up to philosophy in a way that um, I never knew was possible. They both emailed me in the same week and both said, you know, are you actually committed to Anasara? Are you really with us? Why are you showing up late to every class? Why are you not coming when we come to town? And I don't even remember what I was doing actually at the time or why I was showing up late, but for some reason it was on me and I showed up half an hour late to every single time they would show up. It was so ridiculous. So I get these, both of these emails in, in one week and I'm looking back at them now and they both just, reading them both just made me cry with gratitude and they both said, you know, you have to, you have to stand at the feet of the teachings 
get down on your knees at the feet of the teachings and receive them in a way that you can't even imagine right now. You have to stay so close to the teachings. And, and it wasn't about guru. It wasn't about teacher. It was about the teachings, you know. And when I'm teaching now, I start to, when I can soften myself and remember what I have to do, especially when I'm in front of a room full of people, there is a softness, again, it comes back to that, that I have to welcome myself to so that I can, again, just let all of what they have taught me blast through me again and come out in a way that is accessible to whomever I'm speaking to at that moment. And that's kind of the work, you know? I could study, I got books, I have notebooks all over the place. Anybody who knows me, I'm carrying around 4,000 pounds of books right now all the time. I don't really need them. But they hold for me all the teachings that anyone has ever given me and I can then sort of have them in my bag and know that they're there. Except that if I don't soften myself, I don't know what they say. You know what I mean? So this is what I wanted to share with you. Recently, there has been a, an evolution of Anasara um, that initially, I'd say it's been in the past couple of years, that initially made me really nervous. And um, this is where it gets kind of good and meaty, this talk, because it's something that's been on everybody's mind and a question that I get asked pretty frequently. Um, when John started to evolve the tradition in a way that involved more art, more expression, more culture, I got nervous and I got really judgmental really fast and all I wanted to know was where is my dorky, you know, alignment centric practice, perfect yoga practice, where is that? What happened? And I was standing in judgment for a really long time and then I started working with this woman called Lauren Zander. So strange, a life coach. This is not me. You know, I even hear those words and I'm like, what? Life coach. Really? She sits down with me in the first meeting and she says, okay, here's the deal. You have homework to do. You have to find all of the adjectives that describe your family and your parents and all these very specific things, super specific, that has now taken me over 40 hours. I'm not anywhere near done describing their marriage, describing all these very specific things. And you have to find them in yourself. How are they playing out right now for you? In you, as you, right now. And as I started to do this homework, I started to realize that I have been standing in judgment of John, of Anusara, of the evolution of this method for two years. And I didn't even realize it. And suddenly I saw all the judgments that I have of myself and I saw all the hardness and all the ways in which I'm walking around teaching everybody to be soft and forgetting completely that I'm not being soft with myself, I'm not being soft with my teacher, I'm not being soft with my method at all, and I have to deal now. And as I started to tell the truth to myself and write down all these details and all these sort of historical mappings of my life, I started to realize that the minute I let go of these judgments, the minute I see the truth of why I'm judging this this way, it's because I'm first of all afraid of it. I'm afraid of the expression, I'm afraid of the openness, I'm afraid of the, the power, the happiness, the life in it, the art in it. I'm afraid of that. The minute I figured that out, the fear poof, dissolved. And I stood completely 100% in support of everything. And I'll take from it what I want and I learned how to hoop and I learned how to do my corkscrew and I'm psyched, psyched, psyched. And I still take from it the sort of dorky, awesome, technical methodology that I love and that my students love when I give to them my voice in the way that I do. So that's, that's kind of what I have to offer. That's kind of, it's kind of where it's gone for me and I'm realizing now that through that, and here's the magic of it all, through that time when I was doubting, I was staying close but not too close and I had my kid and he was very small so I had kind of an excuse not to be too close. My teachers stood by me and held me close, no matter how close I actually was physically, they stood by me and held me close in such a way that it generated magnetism and strength in me that I never knew was possible and that I could never have generated on my own because of the way they were holding me. You know, figuratively, of course. 
And, and so here I stand. And here's why I feel like anyone is even remotely ready to listen to anything that I have to offer, especially in terms of softening. It's because of them, my teachers. So I have something to read to you. And I read it this morning in meditation, and it's so beautiful. Um, it speaks to our tendencies, all of us, to veer into insufficiency all the time. We all do this. We all just go straight for where we suck, straight for where we are not good enough, for where we, we can't see the light at all. It's uh, A.R. Ammons, who was a professor at my college, and I have loved this for many years. It's called Still. I said, I will find what is lowly and put the roots of my identity down there. And each day I'll wake up and find the lowly nearby, a happy focus and reminder, a ready measure of my significance, the voice by which I would be heard, the wills, the kind of selfishness I could freely adopt as my own. But though I have looked everywhere, I can find nothing to give myself to. Everything is magnificent with existence, is in surfeit of glory. Nothing is diminished. Nothing is diminished for me. I said, what is more lowly than the grass underneath the ground crust of dry, burnt moss? I looked at it closely and said, this can be my habitat. But nestling in, I found below the brown exterior green mechanisms beyond my intellect awaiting resurrection and rain. So I got up and ran, saying there is nothing lowly in the universe. I found a beggar. He had stumps for legs. Nobody was paying him any attention. Everybody went on by. I nestled in and found his life. And there, love shook his body like a devastation. I said, though I have looked everywhere, I can find nothing lowly in the universe. I whirled through transfigurations up and down, transfigurations of size and shape and place, and at one sudden point came still, stood in wonder, moss, beggar, tick, pine, self, magnificent with being. So that's my map. That's my map. And I thank you for listening. Thank you, thank you. Any questions at all, anything, personal or otherwise, please tell me your name. Matt. Matt, thank you. So a lot of stuff that I've seen online when I was like, that's stuff, I took from you a long, long time ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, your teaching, by the way, is really evolved. Not that it wasn't before. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I was there. <laughs> the stuff that I've seen online seems like like there's a lot of art now involved with what you're doing in New York and so is that was that letting go of the fear and then like seeing how that is stepping forward like even this is this is really art you know the fact um, when I graduated from college I was a clothing designer I was a textile designer first which was super technical but still very creative and then I was a clothing designer and I'm I'm a painter I like to weave I like to knit I'm crazy I'm an artist it's so funny that I was so afraid of this evolution of my teacher's method because it was just me being afraid of being great at what I love. You know, we all are. We all do this. And the evolution of, of my sort of work in New York, I'm just starting to see that it is that way. I, this is a good reflection for me because I didn't even, barely even realizing it. It is absolutely a function of my wanting to reflect my teachers, but also like where it has to go. It can't go anywhere else. That's where I'm at. So I have to just stay close to the truth, keep telling the truth, and keep following that. And that is where the abundance is for all of us, really. So thank you for that. Mm. Please. Uh, this morning in the class, uh, you were talking about the student who was under 20. You were saying that he had started. <laughs> Under 20, you would have had all your stuff sorted out by now. <laughs> and then you said that if you did have your stuff all sorted out by now, you wouldn't be doing what you were doing or able to do what you're doing. And that really resonated with me, and I just would love to hear you say a little bit more about that. So I was talking and I looked out and I saw, for some reason in the same moment, I saw these two young girls and they were both, I knew for sure one was under 20. I wasn't sure about the other one because she had a much more of an old soul, but she was definitely young. And as I said it, the one that I wasn't sure if she was under 20, her mom goes, 
<laughs> you know, so sweet beyond. I said, if you know, I wish I had learned this. You know, if I was if I was learning this when I was younger. Oh wow, what a life it would be. And then suddenly it dawned on me in the same moment. It was really, you know, chain of consciousness. I was like, well, if I'd been so sorted out, we wouldn't be able to have this mutual understanding. And I don't know that the teaching would be as potent. It's just potent because I'm sitting here having the same experience that you're all having and like and having teachers around me who give me the, the encouragement and the courage and the bravery to just say it, you know? And that's why we connect. That's it. And I, I think that if all of us would just start doing that for ourselves and yeah, you know, you use the principles of alignment, you use your body on your mat to like get to know what the truth is about who you are and where you stand with yourself. But we start to tell the truth more and more and we start to be honest about who we are and how we are in the smallest interactions and the world opens up in a completely different way. And for me, I don't know if that would have happened if I'd known all this when I was 20. I'm glad to know it now when I'm 40, but I don't know if it would have happened the same way. So that's why I said that. And thank you for that. Thank you. Anything else? Thibaut? Well, yeah. thank you again. Your practice and your teaching. community you brought together. Can you share with us what was the meaning for you of yoga when you first started? I, when I first started, I really had no clue. I had no idea. I was attracted to it. I was attracted, the first class I took was right after I graduated from school. I took a class at the first yoga works on 56th Street in New York City. And my class was with this beautiful teacher and I was smitten with her. I just thought it was the most incredible thing I'd ever seen. There she was, she was articulating her own self, her body. She was clearly very accepting of herself. She didn't have the perfect body, but she was beautiful. So I was taken by that. And so I started doing it because it felt really good and I was getting some, I didn't know at the time exactly how to articulate this, but I started to get some space between my thoughts, which I had never known before. I'd filled up a lot of space because of some familial um, surrounding situation in my life since I was a kid. You know, I had to fill a lot of space by myself. So there was never a space from this thought to that thought. And suddenly the yoga was like, ooh, what's in there, you know? <coughs> Then I met Cindy Lee, it was several years later, but I met Cindy Lee about five years later. I was working in Italy at the time and I was about to quit my job and move back to New York and I met her at a crunch class. So incongruous, we're all looking in a mirror and there she is being hilarious and using everybody's name and I'm dying over her because I think, oh my God, here's like this very communicative, you know, forum for all of us to be together and, and rock loved her. She said, oh, I'm about to open Om Yoga uh, on 14th Street, and the 14th Street at the time was like, get your, you know, get your mace on. <laughs> it was scary, and I was like, I'm coming, I'll do it. Teacher training. I knew nothing. She gave me the application, and I started making little pieces of art to answer every question, and I put them in a box, and she handed it back to me about five years ago. I was like, here. I just found this beautiful. And um, so I knew that I had to do it because I was making art out of everything. And back to that, of course. And um, sewn, I was sewing the card. I, I was crazy, beautiful. And she taught me so much. And it was because of her that I got introduced to John Friend, that she recommended, she had been meeting with him at the time when she was doing our training. And she said, oh, inner spiral organic energy and she like sort of could articulate it but not really and I was like what is this this is so good my brain is engaged my body is engaged my heart's engaged what's going on and I found him you know through and it was actually also through Amy Apolity who's like my heart and soul still to this day um, she encouraged me to go and meet him at the ashram and see what he was about and it was then took me 10 years from that point to really find out. But now this is all about my heart. This is all about my heart. I can't even get enough of the practice of, as, I'm, as I open this, welcoming myself and just trying to get over this self-abnegation, self, just rejecting myself over and over and over again. I cannot get through that. And every time I get to the mat, okay, I'm back. Okay, I'm back. 
you know, sometimes it's just one breath. That's what it's about now. Back to that. So I can just live in my body with total acceptance at all times, no matter what's in front of me. So, the long answer. Thank you, T-Bell. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. <laughs>